Hello YouTube, welcome to Sunday in the shop. We are working in the shop. We have one half of our shelter built. We have three sides, which are six foot high, which is five panels. That's five by four. And all these panels are four foot long. So uh, let us show you our drawing, chicken scratch, and hopefully it won't confuse you. And you can see how this is going to be built. And the way it looks, I'll have enough to make the floor doubled so it'll be three quarters time an inch and a half insulation on the floor. So that'll be great. So stay tuned. Okay, we got a sheet here that's four foot by 14 and a half inches. Okay, we're going to take you down and show you our chicken scratches how we're going to build it. This is one half, so it's four foot this way, so it's going to be eight foot long. Okay, and here's our five panel sheet which equals six by four okay so there's one side there one side there four by six and here's the back okay now if you notice this is five foot here right so if you take one of the panels that's like this four sheets and you turn it around to stack it up you're only gonna be four foot long see this one two three four okay but this is five foot you know when you go this direction so when we build this it's only gonna be four foot we have to patch in the hole in the end I think you can see what I mean you're gonna be short a foot is this equals five so we're just gonna patch it and we've got plenty of panels uh, let's go over they're 40 half wide 48 inches long there's, I bought five bundles, which is 30 sheets. There's six sheets to a bundle. I used 23, I got seven left. And I got like three maybe to patch there. And like four to make a door with. And that, that'll that come in a future video. Okay. Of course, your top is four panels, five by four. So, I think you got the idea. Here's one wall, the other wall, here's the back, but you got to patch in, and then here's the top, and then it'll all be foil taped on the outside, because I'm not going to go inside and try to tape an inside corner, that's kind of silly, right? Now we've already tried the hot glue thing, and it almost would work, if we had, I didn't want to use the adhesive and squirt up. we tried the hot glue thing, but it didn't work, because it melted so far into the styrofoam, that it just could not grab them. So, I did glue one with a whole lot, and it did kind of hold, but it just eats it up. Uh, let me stop, and I'm going to show you this stuff, what it's made like, and show you that it's porous. This is why we want a vapor barrier on the floor, and we're going to probably put, uh, we'll, we'll just discuss that when I get there. Stay tuned. Okay, I don't know how good this is going to show up. I put some simple green on here. Can you see it? Kind of green. Can you see that? Okay, now if you turn this panel over, can you see where it bled through? This stuff is porous. Here, let, let's show you where, where we sawed it off. This is little bitty pieces that are mashed together. Maybe no focus here. We had this broken open once. They're, they're little bitty pieces that are mashed together. I don't know if you can see it better on one of these other ones. See that? So yes, it's porous. You wouldn't want this out in the pouring rain. Okay? So what we're going to do is... We don't want to put anything on the top. Just some plastic to keep the dust and dirt off it. Okay, now the sides we're gonna put plastic, but I think we're gonna put like some Harbor Freight moving blankets on the side for extra insulation on the outside. We're also thinking about putting aluminum foil on the outside, and I'm gonna show you the spray that I got. Okay, and I've got a big roll of aluminum foil, and we're thinking about covering the outside with foil. That way, if any heat, say here's your heat on the inside. Any heat trying to get through, this stuff ain't very thick. 
it's going to hit the foil and try to bounce back that way towards the inside. And in the summertime, it'll keep the heat from penetrating this. You know what I mean? If we can put foil here, because they make this stuff with foil on now. I'm not an expert. If any of you people have ever worked with this stuff, let me know if I'm right or wrong or what you think. Because with foil out here, it's going to be awful hard for the cold and the heat to penetrate here with having to go through the foil first and then with plastic over it. Okay. Or like say Harbor Freight blanket for another insulation and then plastic on the side walls. The top will be just plain with plastic because I'll show you why real quick. Let's swing around to my really bright LED Harbor Freight shop light. So here we go. Watch this. You see that? Here. We, we don't want to blind you, but you know what they are, right? They're one of them four foot LED. So imagine that about a foot from them that's this bright. So you always have a nice glow on your ceiling, even though you see the silver tape lines. It ain't no different really than when you got them things that hold your false ceiling up. So won't that be cool? I was going to hold a big sheet up here once so you can see, but th this gives you the idea. And we're probably two foot away from the light, so imagine being a foot away from the light. We'll bring it out so you don't get the glare out. Okay, let's be right back. Let's grab our glue that we're going to use. Okay, it's be another long story about glue. I was in the home supply place one time, and they didn't have what I wanted. I bought some Gorilla Spray, and I don't say anything about it. It ended up clogging, getting gooey, didn't want to come out. Now, even tried soaking the top in acetone. It ended up the can got plugged up, okay? So even though I took this off, I don't know if I can get it off. I even tried some of just putting a little stick in there. See that? Um, putting a little plug in there, taping over there to keep the air away from it. And then if you had the one with the nozzle that comes up, I put a little toothpick. I even had a toothpick I tried in some product one time. It did not work. There, let's save that for later. Because we had this can upside down and cleared it. I got this for clearance for four and a half bucks. I've seen this stuff for ten, fifteen dollars a can. Loctite brand. I always say, yeah, and I don't monetize this. I don't get paid to ruin any products. But look what you can use it on. Wood metal, acrylic, foam, fabric, uh, different types of polypropylene and PVC pipes. You know, like your watt plastic water pipes. Well, if you look on here, and I will find it right here. Sorry about my camera work. I gotta look on it. Cardboard, foam, fabric, leather, plastic, felt, and cork. Bonding these materials to metal and wood. That ought to glue foil. Here, let's get this. That should glue aluminum foil to this. So we're going to do an experiment right here live today with a piece of aluminum foil and see what happens. We're just going to go for it. We're going to grab one of our crappy sheets because some of these have been damaged and we're going to take a piece of aluminum foil and see what happens. So stay tuned. Let's see what happens. Okay, this was a fail unless you sprayed it lightly and I had I never said pull the top off that It did not want to click back on and I am not kidding you. I just thought to look and wear your goggles Here, I'll take one off my hand. Wear your goggles. You don't know what's gonna happen This is a failure. We're gonna show you why and it's even dry already. Look at that Foam is not styrofoam. You can touch that and it's dry. It's still tacky there. Here it stick to my finger. So if you put a long ways away and spray it, that might not happen. We can't have that. Hey, we're all learning something, right? And I'd still say, yeah, you want your glue on the dull side. Let's peel it off and see how good it stuck to foil. What we think. Need to back off. There. Sorry about that. 
I would say it's still tacky. See? I would say you could stick foil to wood. But I think I would want to spray it on my wood and then wait till it got tacky, not just bond it immediately. Let's put a little bit of spray on here lightly over here and see what happens. <clears throat> we'll let it dry and then we'll be back. See, we were experimenting. Oh, and I got some acetone. I got a little rag so in case I get it on my fingers. But I am wearing gloves. I got it. still got a glove over it. So let's do that. Let's try to spray this lightly. I might have got took because I, I shouldn't have pulled the cap off that thing. And it just, it, it wants to shoot in a stream. There, that's what I'm complaining. It don't come out like spray paint. So I just killed the gnat. Can you see him under my fingernail? He landed on my forehead. This is what I'm telling you, these gnats I got out here. Y'all know what a gnat is. Got him. We don't have a whole lot. There's probably about a dozen in here. Stay tuned. We're going to be right back after spraying this. Okay, here's our second attempt. I know somebody's going to comment. Why don't you just buy the stuff in the 4x8 sheet with the foil on it? Well, it's the cost of it. This stuff is really probably made. It was over in the garage door section. Battery symbols flash the chain when I got to it. Okay, so, so for the and, and the haul it. I only had an SUV to use the haul it, no pickup truck. So there's your answer. Okay, I had to do what I had to do, and I really did. wasn't worried about the foil that bad. Here's our second attempt. Uh, see where it ate it right there? But watch when we peel it up. Now I let the glue dry on this foil, okay? Because remember our last attempt. Watch this. We got back about a foot. It is slightly tacky. What do you think? Would you do that? Worry about just a, a look. I, I'm going for it because that's not that much damage. I know they're going to well, you just made it. How much thinner? What? Quarter inch? And that's when I started spraying it. started squirting down the stream and I backed off a little more. And that stuff's nasty. So, but do I really want to do this on a whole side of something that is going to be 8 foot long, 6 foot high? But do you want I, I, I put my arm down over here. Can you watch? So don't move. Watch. I don't think I want to do it, but if I'll, I'll tell I'll tell you tell you what I will use it for to have left over. I can make a cooler, pop cooler or something, right? And because this is porous, and I can put the foil on the inside and maybe tape the seams. You get me so far? Construction workers do it. They'll take that two inch thick foam, and of course they got that adhesive in the cockroach. And they'll build them a cooler, and they'll make the top where it fits. You know the you know the two layered top where you, the top fits in the square, and then the other piece overlaps it. You know what I mean? Oh, Peyton, you know what I mean. So it's two layers and it's sealed. You just stick. And they'll make coolers out of that stuff with the boss hanging around that two inch pink pink panther stuff. That stuff's expensive. What do you think? Would you use it on a small project? I like said, if you're gonna make like a little pop pop beer cooler. And you had this laying around, and then you got down in the corner, and when you put it together, right, you do each panel separate, and you put some foil tape down in the corners. I think it'd last. I wouldn't carry it in the back seat of the car, but I think it'd make a pretty darn good cooler, wouldn't it? Or just do the outside. Don't, yeah, yeah, don't worry. I tell you what, don't worry about the water penetrating from the inside. I'd do it on the outside. And cover it all in foil and tape. That way it's easier to do. So I would. I'd make a homemade cooler out of this if I had if I had this for free and I'm on the job site and we got some spray laying around. I think I'd go buy some aluminum foil at the dollar store and during my lunch time or, or just swipe some taken home. You know, that, that that's a cooler that's fourteen and a half inches tall, four foot, so it could be two foot by one foot. You wouldn't need that many sheets. 
fill a bundle of six and take it home. Talk to the boss. Suck up to him. Hey, let's go down there and see if you can see this. There we go. That wasn't too much damage. That was terrible. <laughs> hey, this is how you learn. You learn by doing. If you're not making mistakes and you're not you're not doing anything, you're not getting nothing done. So you know what? Well, Jim did it and it worked pretty good. I think I'm gonna try it. I took a picture of the can. I think I want to try it and put it on there and make something. So stay tuned. We'll find something else to do. But I had to experiment to do this. I figured you might as well go right along for the ride. So stay tuned. I'm going to have a break and I'll be right back. Okay, the tip of the day. Keep the gnats out of my coffee even though the lid closed. There's still a small gap in there. So even this is closed. Still, boy, that's getting scummy. I need to wash it all better. And I'm always putting the napkin and trying to weight it down with something, my pocket knife or something. There. Be smart. Work smart. Simple but effective. Uh, leftovers. Uh, here's a tip. So you got a pretty nice bowl and that's all you got. So I've got some leftover bowls that's so got the plastic wood. Well, sometimes uh, that's not available. So you, know, you got a bowl that might have a little bit of a lip. Put some wax paper down for, or can. So you open a can of baked beans, right? You're going to eat the rest the next day. Put some wax paper over it, right? Okay. Then put your foil, which this is doubled, and go around and squish down. See, that's the rim of the can. Go around like this and squish that down and lock it on. And your beans will stay good for a couple days. I had a can I had in the fridge for three days. I'm not going to eat them after a week. But there's tip of day. You want to seal like a can of pork and beans? Throw them in the fridge. You only ate half of them. Put wax paper underneath this for a better seal. You can put it back on, see? I can see one of the bulls had a lip. See over there where it, where it caught that lip? Like, you know them glass bulls, they got the... There, we talked about that enough. See, you learn something today. See? You learn something every day. If you learn something every day, well then sooner or later you're going to get either wise or just get old. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's your tip of the day. You see down there in the light reflection? Okay, now let me flip this over. Can, can, can you see it? Can, can you see a line in there? See it? Barely see it. I can't get my hand up there. It's about right in, right in here. That, that'll peel open right there. So if you rip this out, let me start ripping out and I'll show you. You don't need a knife or nothing to get this stuff open. Okay, can you see right here? It's serrated. Let's see if we get around the corner. Watch. Look at that. I figured that out all on my own. But the other side isn't. And you know what? Let me get this off here. If, if a guy's really thrifty and likes to recycle, this stuff might be saying, but think how much of this is going in the garbage. What? Ten packs of this? I mean, Archie, what could you do with this? That's a nice plastic. Let's continue ripping this open. You get what I mean. That's pretty easy. Okay, now you can see the other side better. See it? Right in here, it's serrated. Think of all this plastic that's going to waste. Each piece is 14 half inches wide. Because it went around there, so at least with the waist, you can get over a foot, right? And four foot long. Ain't that a shame? Boy, if you was desperate, how many times... Could you take this, like, four or six times to make a window in your log cabin? What do you think? It's not very good stuff, but still. What a shame that it's going to go in the garbage. Somewhere I take a picture of that. I don't want to tell you these videos, in, but I don't get paid to show any products. If I like it, I want to show it. And th this is all they had, so. Whether I like it or not, suck it up. Three quarter inch thick. Here you go. 
And these are like 11 bucks a pack for six of them, just so you know. So you can do the math. You want to buy 10 of them, you just go right ahead like I did. It, I, I, my wallet still hurts. But you got to do what you got to do. They won't let me have a wood stove. I can cry about that all day. I, I get a kick out of this. Okay, tools required. Now, right here, I get a pet peeve about some instructions. Easy trim panels. Okay. See your cheap cutter blade. Okay. See, see the straight edge. Right? Straight edge. Uh, and tape measure safety glasses. But look, step number three. Break off the insulation work cut. Well, why'd you have to break it off if you cut all the way through? They got to set. If, if I'm going to cut my insulation, I'm going to have it on a piece of plywood or something. Right? I don't care if I gouge it all day long. I wouldn't do it on my tabletop. So, so just stop and think about it. You shouldn't have to break nothing off. So we're going to do an experiment with my saw and show you how messy it is. Then we're going to do an experiment with my utility knife. And that's all I have. And it's not going to be deep enough blade. But we'll be right back. We're going to go back to that scrap panel and play with it. So we'll be right back. Okay, let's try this with the record button on. Let, let, let's, let's see how messy this is. I got the trash can down here. Okay. If I did this, I'll probably do it outside. Pretty messy. Get the trash can in here. I don't want this stuff all over my shop floor. Oh boy. Oh, what a mess. Here, let me shut the camera off. We'll be back. Okay, we are not doing that in here again. Here, let's try my utility blade. I think it'll go all the way through. Can you see me? I didn't want to use a tripod, but... Oh, I got a piece of paper under here. I don't want to scratch my nice antique desk. Table. You know what I mean. I'll have to correct myself. Here, let, let's, let's get it all situated here. Are we ready? Can you see me? There's the edge. Let, let, let's see what this does. See how I like this utility? See that? You see this part right here? We got about eight of an inch more slack to go. See that? That's why I like this utility. I get one of these. If you've got one of these, look how nice they are. Don't be stingy with your money. You can do it. Find a way to justify buying it. Throw your other one away and hide it. Well, this is a brand new blade. I've done just a little bit of work with it. Here we go. Watch your fingers. It's kind of tough. We're going to get in here close. You can see me fighting it. Oh boy, I don't like this at all. And they showed me using that little piddly snap-off blade. <laughs> they showed me using that little piddly snap-off blade thing. Look at this, and that's a new blade. Is that terrible or what? We've got to figure out something. Let, let me pop. we got to figure out something. I'm going to start looking through my knife collection. You know, I've got about six, seven panels that are damaged. I can go back to the store and the man and give me a new bun on. See, well, what's that look like to you? Does that look like the forklift to you? Look at the shape of it. Somebody shoved that in there, in there and hit the pallet wrong or something or if this stuff's on a pallet, how, what'd you do? You missed the pallet and went underneath the... Maybe they stacked a bunch on the fork, see, or whatever, but still. If I get that gnat, I'll be happy. You know, they'll get in your face and you can't get them, and I used to be pretty fast, but... Look at that. We got all day Sunday in the shop. And I could, I could actually go back and take all them damaged panels, and I marked them with a sharpie marker and say, I want a new bundle. I'm not. Just suck it up. You can still use them. This, I'm just scrapping this one because I'm practicing. Let me see what I've got I can cut this stuff with. 
I'm not making a hot knife, and I'm like I said, that end where it's gonna be. I need I need a foot more. Well, I'm gonna have to chop down a 14 half inch piece to a foot wide. So we're gonna be doing some little bit of cutting on this project. Plus, we might want to make some arts and crafts or something on some piece, or make me a pop cooler. I don't drink beer, but make me a pop cooler. I think we're not going to put the foil on this shell thing. We're going to save that idea, like I said, for small projects. We just get back and spray it real quick. and So, my glue won't go to waste. So you want to put something on the wall, you can lightly spray it, but nah. Thumbtack. If I put any, say I put any posters on this, you think I could hang like an ice blanket or something on my wall inside and thumbtacks would hold it if I had enough of them in there? We're going to be experimenting it. This is all just trial and error day to see what we're... Let's look through our knives and see what... We, if I got to go to the house to get my old hickory butcher knife blade, I'm not going to be very happy. That is for in the house, my old hickory knife. Believe me, that thing will slice through an onion like... It puts my chef's knife to shame. Because it is carbon steel, razor sharp edge. The one I got from Magda and I read it, the old hickory. I call that like a boning carving knife, whatever, the way it's shaped. So you, oh, you can rip into a turkey so fast. Speaking of turkey, you think we get craving for turkey and it's not the holiday? I dreamt I was, I woke up and smelled turkey one morning. I'm, I'm tired of being cheated here in life. You do not have to wait till Thanksgiving or Christmas to have a turkey in the oven. But all you do is start the bag. Is that how you make them, anybody? I just throw them in the bag and I put a quart of sick of butter down there, some garlic onion powder inside of it. And that goes into the broth. You can save the broth to make gravy. Huh? Has anybody thought of that? Making a turkey when it's not in season? That would get you hungry for a turkey. They're so easy to do in the bag. And get two of them aluminum foil pans. Do not trust one. Get two aluminum foil pans and use two of them if you if you don't trust. And put it on a cookie sheet with a lip on it. If you're going to use them bags and that aluminum roaster, put it on a good cookie sheet. It will still get enough heat to cook it. Do not let one of them foil pans throw it on the rack of your oven and have a leak in it. You'll learn. I had it happen once. I hope you have, but we got to be fair. There was some gunk on the blade, so let's 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 retake. Let's get, get you back up here. Come on, let let's retake. Now, well, see, good happen. Look, see, is this start coming up? Okay, this is the thinnest razor sharp knife I have. This is made from a saw blade. You know, I always tell people, it was a miter saw where it was just a cheap wooden box that's angled, you know, to cut your corner molding. And it's a saw blade that's probably four inches tall. And the top has got metal folder, so it's super rigid. It will not flex. So it's got a top metal piece on it, okay? And it's fine too that it goes down in that miter saw box. So if you ever see one, don't pass it up if you ever think about making your own knife. And this is that one I did the faux painting on. I took the black paint and it was getting gooey and I just scrubbed it on the brush. Okay, you ready? Let's get set up and we'll try it because I've already tested this one. Okay, hope this shows up good. Can you see a knife please? Okay, here we go. I went down in here like this, right? I'll drive by, I'll go off the frame. Whoa, did that flick that up. Ooh, let's get a look at this. Come over here, the other piece went flying. Wow. Hey, it just won the contest. This is what I'm using. You know what other knife that works good? And I worked for a company, we had to use that scratchy yellow fiberglass insulation, had foil one side, and but I'm not going to go into that story too much. We had to foil tape all the sections, right? It came in four pieces where you fold together. 
So it had foil. What they did is they took this yellow insulation, right, and they sawed it on a table saw and with the, with the, with the 45 degree groove and you fold it up one side, right? You get me so far because it was gouged out. You do it with metal. Fold the end, fold the end. You got to the last edge, you had to put the foil tape on it, okay? Well, the yellow insulation was on the inside. Fiberglass, okay? I mean, he's going to haul me in the court. Where was this place? And imagine blowing air through that yellow fiberglass insulation. Do you want that blowing in the air room? No. Hey, it was full spin up the code. Think of the dirt that would collect in that crap. We got to take a break after that one. No, dude, don't even try to get... If they come question you, I, I made it up. It's a lie. It's, no, don't, don't believe it. It's just a lie. But don't use that. Would you want to blow dirt through that? Air and dirt? You know it's going to collect. Say you was exhausting. Right? And there's no furnace that's completely efficient. You're going to have to. Would you want dust coming through here? I'll tell you another one. You ever see people go in the studs of their upstairs floor and you know between the joists and put a piece of tin and make a duct out of that with that dusty old wood for the. No, don't do that stuff, people. You know what I mean, you've had to see an old, if you're old as me, you've probably seen an old house. They use the floor joist opening for duct work. That don't work. Don't do that. Oh, and I just reviewed. The knife, the knife that works good. You know the real nice fillet knives that have that tooled leather sheath that's like a light tan leather? You've seen them. The really good fillet knives, like back when I was a kid. Those work good. I watched the guy use it. He cut through that tough fiberglass insulation with it. And it did work good. Because he was the guy that cut it. I never had to cut any. He, he cut stuff custom fitted for us. But yeah, a fillet knife. And it worked so good. And that, I know other guys are using chili knives or whatever, but no, a fillet knife. Okay, we're going to take a break. We're about halfway through our big whatever uh mungo coffee and sugar and i made it strong believe me oh i'm on a roll here i'm it's it's i don't know what time it is it's probably one o'clock in the afternoon and i still got to do building today after this video so i will be working and come back when i make some more panels to show you so stay tuned we're gonna have one more thing at the end of this video which will probably be me done by the end of the day so uh, we're going to get to work and get some work done. Okay, I showed this in my other video. I'll show you again. See that? Just use it. Just put your forefoot out here, right? That's why it's nice to have this table. Let's get over here. That's why it's nice to have the table. Just use it. That's going to be taped anyway. The other one stuck out further. This job that you you can tell where it was deformed, mashed in. See it? Just go with it. Don't be picky. Oh, another tip: tape halfway, right? Flip your board over and tape this halfway, because this is what happens. See this? So flip it over. Oh, you can put your little square out in the middle to hold together. See this table over here? I got this crammed up. I, I'm right here, man. I got an assembly shop. See that? It hits the river and I can just go, and it's tight. See it? I can push over here. Man, I'm in the production area here. I'm ready to go. Back to work. Well, you two viewers, we're about done. We're all set of tape. I had like a roll and three quarters. <laughs> and you think I'd be smart enough. Just, just spend the money and buy, uh, an extra roll. This is a five sheeter. I said sheet. S A T E E T. This is one of the walls, six foot high. I had a little accident over here and broke a piece. Because I tell you what, I was trying to flip this. You do it. Watch me do it again. You get it. You, you try to do it here. Here we go. Don't hit the light, strange. And there it goes down. 
Man, just bare it up room. The four, the four sheet ones, the you know your half floor and half top. That ain't nothing. But we're out here. We're gone. We're going in. We had enough. We we may take a break here and see if we got enough tape in this to make one more wall. But we only need to make two more walls, and we are ready to assemble. So when I go to the store, I buy another roll of tape or just buy two more. I'm hearing you yell, two rolls. Yeah, because you know you're going to need projects over the winter time. And I do a lot of arts and crafts with foil tape. That's why one roll I have was only was half gone, because I'm always making stuff with it. It's good stuff to play with. Go on and buy a roll for seven and a half bucks. I left pictures on my other video. Go get your roll and play with it. It's fun stuff. It's way better than using that cloth type stuff. You can cover lighters with it like your disposable one you can wrap it around and you can do all kinds of arts and crafts with it that's fun there my last one had a photo like this so see you later we're out of here see you next week to everybody that watched it to the end i built my shop in 2011 and I bought this tape measure brand new. And I've dropped it more times than I'll ever admit to you. And I don't remember ever wiping it off. I'm going to set and clean it up. Let's, let's pull this out of the way. How dirty is the bottom? It's about the same all the way through. And I've had it stretched out to the max. There you go, a little extra. I've had some little trouble with the lock once in a while. Thanks for watching.